In one hour, rapper Jack Harlow will arrive at the studio, so I need to make a cinematic lighting setup to shoot a video for him. Oh, it's Janik. Hey Jordy, change of plans, we're coming to your place. But I don't have any lights at home. Then just take them with you. But Janik didn't know I came to work with my bike today. One hour on the clock and I had to transform my living room into a cinematic studio without any lights. Lighting is not about lights. Wait, what did you just say? It's an actual technique. So as long as you have something that emits light, it can be used for an interesting shot. But before we start with anything, we first need to understand why we use lights in video production. And the biggest mistake is to turn on the lights because it's too dark. In other words, making a room brighter. But that's almost never the reason why we use lights. Now, interesting enough, we use lights to make everything appear more three-dimensional. You see, videos are flat, two-dimensional. Just think about the device you're watching this video on right now. It's a flat screen. So it's up to the creative to make the illusion that what the camera records is three-dimensional. And there are hundreds of ways to do that. But with lighting, it's all about creating shadows. When I ask you to draw a round ball, this would be considered a circle. It's flat. So to create the illusion that it's a round object, we draw a shadow. Ah! So Janik is laughing at my ball and he thinks he can draw a better 3D ball. So go ahead, Janik. I'm real curious right now. There, is this a better ball? 3D ball. And when adding light to a subject, we do the same thing. So back to finding lights. Anything that emits light is going to be usable. And I'm going to start off with the biggest light source that everybody has in their living room. The windows. Now sitting right in front of a window makes your face flat. Think about that circle because there are little to no shadows. So turn your chair around a little bit to catch the light from an angle. Now regardless of what light you're using, this one is called the key light. Much better. We got a problem. What? The driver took a shortcut and we are arriving in 15 minutes. With no time to lose, you want to look for a subject, something like a doll or a round object, so that you have a clear idea of how the shadows look. I'm gonna go for these pillows. This will do. Step two, the background. Think about making things more 3D or creating more depth and sitting close to a wall is pretty flat. So make sure that your background is separated from the subject. This creates depth. You can even look for interesting objects that can help with that. Long objects like this cabinet show a clear perspective. Step three, we can create even more depth in the scene by separating the subject using a backlight. This is nothing more than a light coming from behind the subject. And this could be any light, maybe something that you have at your ceiling that you can turn around and aim. Or perhaps some other decorative lights like a desk light. You can use aluminum foil to avoid spill and control the lights better. As a rule of thumb, you want to place this backlight on the opposite side of where the window or the key light is coming from. And as you see, this creates a nice highlight on the back of the subject, or my pillow. I know it's pretty ridiculous, but we have to work with what we have. Now, having actual film lights would be useful. That's why I try to take these lights from Roto Light with me, which would be a great place to start with if you're looking to get your first light kit. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video and I want to showcase their newest AOS 2 Pro and Neo 3 Pro lights for a moment. They share the same technology as their bigger Titans, but in a much smaller and portable form factor at a very affordable price. Now, apart from having an amazing power output, they are packed with tons of great features. Both the lights come with a whole bunch of special effects built in, like fireworks, candles, disco, and more. These effects were actually designed by an Emmy Award winning visual effects veteran. And on top of that, you have an endless color palette to choose from. There are more than two 2,500 filters from Lee and Roscoe. And you can browse all of these wonderful colors and presets with ease through the touchscreen. Or you can use the upgraded aluminum dials from the Neo 3 Pro. There's even a Master of Lights preset pack where multiple Emmy Award winning filmmakers created presets so that you can recreate their cinematography look. You can either plug them in or power through a V-mount battery, making them useful for any location. And if you want to learn how to work with these lights as well, definitely check out our lighting course. I bundled this one together with our filmmaking and cinematography course and because I'm a little bit crazy, I've slapped a 70% discount on it for the first 50 people to use the coupon first on checkout. All the info is in the description down below together with the link to the amazing Roto Lights. That's Janik again. So, uh, we're on your driveway. Alright, stall as much time as you can. 
Alright, this scene is already looking better, but there's still work to do. The background is just not interesting, and that is because there's no contrast. But making contrast is actually pretty easy to do. All you have to do is add some light in there. That could either be a hard light that creates some sort of a hot spot, or you can work with practical lights. These are simply decorative lights that are visible in your scene. Oh, by the way, if you happen to have a window in the background, don't be afraid to use it, but keep your curtains closed so that it's soft. On camera, look at flat areas and see if you can break that by putting some lights there. Again, look around in your home to find lights or stuff that you can use. You could even use the flashlight of your phone and put a vase on it. A very creative way to add a practical light in the background. Oh snap! There's still one last thing we have to do which could make or break your scene. Hang on! I'm in the shower! Alright, the last step are background objects. And just like with practical lights, you want to make sure that your background isn't too boring, like sitting right in front of a white wall. And depending on what topic the video is about, you can pick the right objects, but things like plants always work. So you might want to shuffle some things around in your living room. Look around at your place and see what you can find. You finished? Yeah, I'm gonna make my hair wet. Why? Because otherwise I lied about taking a shower. Okay. Come, Jack. This is a nice shot. Hey, Jack Harlow, it's nice to... That's not Jack Harlow, that's Lorenzo. And that's the story of how I turned my living room into a cinematic set for no reason at all. But now that you know the basics of lighting, you are ready to take that to the next level and learn about visual storytelling using actual film lights. And you can learn how to do that in this video here on my left. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay creative.